Radio Next TV on the Cool Groove site. It is that time again every Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Cool Groove site. Dr. Mark Echo, we are H. here. Bell. We are here. Intersecting wisdom and knowledge <laughs> on Warp and Wolf Radio. What's up, partner? Oh, man, there's all kinds of things going on this week. Wonderful stuff. And we are anticipating great times today with Wendy Cooper coming in. Oh, man, I'm telling you, this is a renaissance woman, let me tell you, a lady around town. Uh, But we have a great, great show topic as we continue uh, the theme on place, where Christians need to be and how we need to uh, uh, bring our gifts and talents into a community. And uh, we're going to be talking about that today before Wendy comes in. And speaking of place, uh, Spirit in Place, a great event that IUPUI uh, helps sponsors each and every year is taking place right now. And we're going to find out more about that. So as we do each and every week, you listen to just a little bit of this good music, and then we're going to come back. And place is the topic on today's show, Warp and Wolf Radio on the Cool Group site. Uh, we'll be right back with you. RadioNext.tv on the Cool Groove site, and we are back with Warp and Wolf Radio on the Cool Groove site. Uh, Dr. Mark Echo, Harold H. B. Bell, each and every Wednesday morning, uh, trying to make sense of this madness. And Mark, mm-hmm. that song was so appropriate. Love is law. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we need love uh, mm-hmm. in a bad, worst kind of way. We've only got six days to vote, and we don't do a lot of politicking up in here. But all I can say is please go exercise your Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the most important things that I think we can do as citizens. Uh, you can't control the outcome, but you can control uh, your voice. Your responsibility. And your responsibility. Mm-hmm. So please go out and vote. Uh, today's show topic, and before we get started, as we always like to do, uh, Warp and Wolf Radio is sponsored by Cominius Institute, a great organization that I have the pleasure of being on the board. Um, uh, really making changes and differences to our young people here in the community. So, Mark, please just tell them a little bit about Cominius before we get into today's show. Sure, yeah. We have that great commercial that we do. Uh, Brian Hudson, Pastor Brian Hudson, did a nice job putting that commercial together for us. Bottom line is uh, we're seeing all kinds of threads throughout all of life being interconnected under the Lordship of Jesus, Colossians 117. By him are all things held together. Our service is towards students at IUPUI linking their Christian thought and what they're learning in the classroom. Awesome, awesome. And we're going to continue to convey that message, and uh, uh, the numbers are growing mm-hmm. uh, each and every week. We, You know, what we find is that the young people are very curious, and uh, we sure. have to have answers and provide answers to hopefully lead them uh, in a proper way so they do have something to come That's back right. to. Uh, but anyway, today's uh, show theme is the importance of place. And uh, first question, Mark, is going to be, uh, where does the idea of place come from in the Bible, and uh, why is it such an important word? Yeah, you know, this is uh, something I've been studying for almost 20 years now, and I've always thought uh, the idea of location, where we live, is so imperative. And we don't talk about it much, I don't think, from a biblical point of view. So we wanted to do that today, especially with our guests coming in, talking about spirit and place uh, this weekend. So... Uh, just to give you an example of this from the Indianapolis Star. The Indianapolis Star reported, while promotions or new paying jobs tip- typically mean new wealth, the increasingly rootless habits of Americans have come at a price leading to declining participation in neighborhood organizations and local politics because folks aren't commuted any longer. They're just going from job to job to job. And of course, this is a problem of mobility. So one of the uh, the books that's out there is, uh, is entitled Staying Put, Making a Home in a Restless World. Uh, and one of the statements there from Scott Russell Sanders, the author, says, we are so enamored of mobility we don't recognize what's being lost in the process. So we need to think about how our location, how our place is sacred in the sense that God has placed us there. So from a biblical point of view, we're talking about sacred places that begin literally in Genesis 1.1. The heavens and the earth are sacred because God made them. So Yahweh gave, gave land to Israel, land flowing actually with milk and honey. There were boundary stones which could secure a place of my own for the Israelites. Uh, the heavens injunction are the trees of the field, people that you should besiege them. This is a great statement out of Deuteronomy 20. And one of Judah's great kings, Uzziah, was said to have loved the soil. So when God's original intention is restored, literally, uh, when he comes back again, every man will sit under his own fig tree, which literally is a great metaphor, which means everybody's going to be wealthy in their place. 
So the concept of place is hugely important. We're not interested in just moving all the time, but actually creating community, neighborhood, all the rest of that. You, you just mentioned neighborhood, and, and we talk about it in so many different ways, uh, Mark, on the show, about uh, the loss of neighborhood um, mm -hmm. in, in communities. And, and it seems that what you're saying is that uh, we need to, to cherish and cultivate the place that we've been given instead of just driving by and taking it for granted. That's right. Um, and that's what, we've, that's what we tend to do now. You oh, know, we, absolutely. We really don't appreciate the environment, that rich environment that we already have been rooted in. Uh, so what does Proverbs have to say about place? Yeah, man, this is, uh, there are so many things. Like I tell you, every single week, there's so much we could say about Proverbs. But here's just a couple. Uh, Proverbs 22.28 and Proverbs 23.10. That's 22.28 and 23.10 say do not move the ancient landmarks so here it is in the old testament land was given by god and then it was taken care of by our ancestors or whoever preceded us and then by taking care of the land you're literally caring for one's neighbor because you're not moving the boundaries meaning you can't just take somebody else's land away from them that's the whole point of this. So, yeah, yeah. We, I'm sorry, I got choked up on that. Yeah, I know. We, we, I'm telling you, man. This is it's ancient, but it's present. The same kinds of things that were happening in the ancient world happen today. We have place and know our place. We invest in our place. Our place is property and ownership. This is really important for us. We believe in owning a piece. You know, we talk about that getting a piece of something, and that's where this comes from. So, having a home is really important to everybody. Community necessitates a place. So to be in community with other people, the church's place is to know its place. That means the church needs to know its setting, needs to know its neighbors, needs to know its culture, its locale, all of that stuff. So for the believer, this world is my home. I'm not just passing through. So if we were to grade the modern-day church, we Ooh. are failing. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm just listening to oh, Dr. Mark Eckel, absolutely, though, Because, man. I mean... This, and see, I think I'm always amazed when we go to Scripture <laughs> and Mark because it is so simple. Mm -hmm. It is, I mean, it's so spelled out and so easy if we just, but it's almost like the simplest place is. Yeah. Instead of caring for the land or territory that we own and, and can cultivate, let me go get more. Right. And as you go get more, neglect mm -hmm. your place. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> That's interesting. Yep. Interesting. So what does the rest of Scripture say about place? There is so much to say about all of this, but let me start by talking about uh, Genesis again, because quite frankly, all of this, everything, uh, when we talk about any kind of theological construct, comes out of Genesis. So just an interesting point of fact with Hebrew language. The word Adam is the same word Adamah, which is ground. So when you're talking about Adam, you're talking about the ground. So listen to this. This is really fascinating. This is just pulled right out of Genesis. God created the ground, that's Genesis 1.10, establishing a physical place upon which the creatures would live on the ground, 125. The ground belonged to God, which he sustained with water, 2.3. Man was brought from the ground to work the ground. The ground would then produce food for human sustenance. After sin, maintenance of the ground brought it with it hardship and relocation for production. Before sin, man brought fruit up from the ground, but after sin, man would go down to the ground. However, while the ground was cursed, man was not. Crops from the ground were taken as a physical display of thanks for the one who gave it. While its productivity was withheld as a punishment for the criminal, the ground even allowed shed blood to bear witness to the crime. Remember, Abel's blood spoke out from the ground. The curse of the ground by God was not left without comfort or rest, because it brought Noah, whose li name literally means rest. The destruction of the ground would not be done again. This is about the flood. And even Noah is called a man of the ground. So you remember John Milton in Paradise Lost? Yes, sir. John Milton in Paradise Lost, he's talking about being displaced from our place in the Garden of Eden. However, once what was lost will be regained someday, and the ground will be retained again from Adam to Adamah. So Adam and the ground, man, there it is. Ooh, my brain is smoking. <laughs> <laughs> we better take a musical break so there I you can go. cool off and come back. <laughs> We're talking about place, and if you're out there listening, please have someone listen in. Uh, uh, the information is so important that you can find on this Warp and Wolf Internet radio show each and every Wednesday morning. We'll be right back. Radionext.tv on the Cool Groove site, Dr. Mark Echo, Harold H.B. Bell, Warp and Wolf Radio. And if you do not know what Warp and Wolf means, 
Dr. Mark. Give him, give him some. Just a little bit, yeah. So the vertical horizontal threads that make fabric, everybody who's wearing clothes is warping and woofing. And everybody who is breathing on this planet should be mm. warping and woofing. Mm-hmm. It, That's right. That's <laughs> I mean, right. in, in a serious note, uh, you know, if we can work together, the better we are as a whole. And uh, today we are talking about place. And in uh, the 11 o'clock hour, uh, we're going to welcome in uh, Wendy Cooper, who is representing Spirit in Place, a great, great uh, tool used by uh, IUPUI to really warp and woof That's right. uh, the students with different things going on in our culture. And this That's is a right. great segue into uh, today's show theme, which mm-hmm. is place. And, and what is your place? And, uh, That's right. Uh, just post it out there on Facebook. Do you know your place? Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> really good. important because it has to do with design as well. But uh, on the second segment here, uh, give us some contemporary examples of how place is important to people. Mark. Sure. Yeah, I, you know, I watch football on Sunday afternoon, and I'm always interested in the commercials just as much as I am in the games. And there are some commercials out there where fathers, you know, they're kind of going around the house, locking doors, making sure everything's cool, you know, and they look in on their little girl and she's sleeping. And the famous line that comes out of one of them, you know, when he talks about this isn't going to happen on my watch, you yeah. know, kind of bit, you know. <laughs> That's really cool because the whole point is he's protecting his place, taking care of his place. I'll tell you, HB, when we went down to that Attics film, the school that opened the city, I mean, my eyes were open to a lot of different things, but not the least of which is that that uh, whole neighborhood, that black family neighborhood was raised, and by raised I mean R-A-Z-E-D, that is wiped out, uh, in order to build the college down there. And when I think about that, you know, talking about people being displaced, I, then I think immediately, I think about the unconscionable U.S. Uh, effort back in 1831 to move the Cheyenne Nation from the East Coast to Oklahoma, the Trail of Tears, as it was called, and the awfulness of that. I remember Dr. Yancey uh, this uh, last summer at the uh, group that we were with, uh, the study center group, and he was speaking, he's from North Texas University, he's a Christian sociologist, and he was really candid about his assessment of the need for racial reconciliation, but he said this, he said, my house is probably built on land that was taken from an Indian tribe. And here's an African American man who says this, so here you have all of us who are in one way or another uh, concerned about place, and then the whole issue of Uh, Are you going to protect it once you have it and so on? We could talk about our neighborhoods. We could talk about the peacekeepers of Indianapolis. We could talk about Ten Point Coalition, who, by the way, are going to be on our show next week. And then, HB, I wanted you to just give a a moment, a little shout-out to your new program, because that's all about place. It's about love and Project 46218. Yeah. Uh, You know, I can't take it. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Um, really, I mean, seriously, this is a seed that was planted, you know, by my, my Lord and Savior. Um, I don't take a lot of credit. I just, you know, kind of influenced the, the, the seed that's been planted. And uh, growing up in that neighborhood, I watched place mm. be raised, as you mentioned, mm. R-A-I. SED, um, because we had a neighborhood that was so rich and so uh, uh, pure mm-hmm. as far as what family did with one another, as far as uh, the adults, the village raising the, you could not mess up and get home without somebody checking you before That's you right. got home and your parents said it's okay to check him, mm-hmm. which means discipline him, do what you need, scold him, whatever you needed to do. When, when we were off guard, you didn't have uh, lapses. Yeah. In, in about a two and a half uh, square mile area, okay. and and I've watched that whole neighborhood be uh, just decimated by lack of uh, having public schools in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, kids don't have anything to galvanize the community around. Uh, we had a little league baseball park where, as I mentioned earlier, four uh, IPS schools fed into that little league park, mm-hmm. which means now you're meeting people from another neighborhood in your neighborhood, mm-hmm. um, and and those things are gone now. And so if you lack a sense of place, yeah. you it's hard to have a sense of pride about what you're, you're, <coughs> where you're living, how you're living, your neighbor, what your yard looks like. Uh, sure. we, I mean, if your neighbor was cutting the grass, uh, boy, go get that lawnmower and cut the grass. <laughs> no, I, I mean, seriously, because everybody was checking one another in That's some right. way, form, or fashion. So, uh, yeah, the Project 46218, what I really hope to do is breed together the churches. Uh, the, the mom and pop stores, the uh, community programs like the YMCA and the multi-service centers that sit in that area, mm. and make sure that there's some communication and some neighborhood. There you go. Which recreates place. That's right. 
That's yeah. right. Yeah, so this is a, a huge issue for us, and uh, I think there's, you know, the idea of how we construct place for community is huge. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I thank you for mentioning that because, you know, if anyone's out there listening right now and want to participate, uh, that show takes place every Monday morning uh, between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m., but we're really trying to, and, and hopefully what happens is we're doing four six project four six two oh eight <laughs> projects four six two two six and mm-hmm. now all these all these zip codes have a place that's right where they can come and say here's what's going on in our neighborhood so that's what we're doing so how can uh, I guess what is the important place for the Christian first for, of all yeah for the Christian life is is huge so there's this uh, famous line out there by Gertrude Stein who wrote uh, a book called Everybody's Autobiography. She wrote, there's no there there. She's famous for that line, there's no there there, because when she went home to her hometown of Oakland, California, she returned looking for a childhood home and the house wasn't there. And so Stein's there was nowhere to be found. So that was a really important idea to her. Mark Edmondson, another university professor, picked up Stein's quote to highlight the vulnerability in college students. And this is one of the things he said, and I'm quoting here, at a student party, about a fourth of the people have their cell phones locked to their ears. What are they doing? They're talking to their friends. What are they talking about? Another party they might conceivably go to. And naturally, the stimulation is better, the other party is better than the one that they're at now, even though the people at that party that they're talking about are on their cell phones looking for a different kind of party. So during a class one day, Edmondson took a poll. He asked his students, how many places were you simultaneously yesterday at the most? And he's talking about between cell phones, texts, Mac, iPods, uh, books, and so on, and the the occasional glance of the teacher. Uh, And he was absolutely amazed when they said we were in 10 different places at the same time. Unbelievable. So Edmondson concludes, be everywhere now. That's the current technology, and that's what students aspire to. So my question is, how important is place to the Christian? I'm going to give you my five S's this morning. Every, every, oh, you. Yeah, I know. I give you fives here. Here we go. You need to be in your place. That means satisfaction. Be in your place. Satisfaction. Number two, stay in your place. That means sojourn. That means camp out. Stay in your place. Sojourn. Number three, participate in your place. That means service. Number three is service. Take care of your place. That means safeguard it. Take care of it. Safeguard it. And number five, quit looking for another place. Support the one you're in. Support the one you're in. And remember what Proverbs says, Proverbs 27.10, better a neighbor close than a brother far away. (laughs) Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about that. And uh, all the time about, you know, family, place, brotherhood and all. Uh, But what can Christians do to begin to practice the biblical concept of place in everyday lives? Uh, You know, yeah, this is a huge issue. And frankly, it goes back to rootlessness. That is, we don't have any real roots. But I want you to tell us about some roots. Now, you got to give us some roots. And I want you to specifically talk about the barbershop in the black community. I don't even know where to begin when you start talking. <laughs> That's the sanctuary. I, okay. I mean, that is where probably the most free, especially as an African-American male, that is the most absolute free place in a community, I think, that you can go, be, share, disagree, agree to disagree, find something out that maybe you didn't know or mm. think different about something that you felt about. Mm. Uh, the, the, I think the, the culture of the barbershop in the black community is more or less here is where we can put it all on the table without being ostracized without being judged Mm. um that's where real conversations and real pure feelings you know men are are known we're known for trying to be tough or whatever but um that is where true feelings and passion can be put on the table and everybody has something to contribute in the commentary um, I can remember at a very young age, even place within the place, okay. uh, used to be sports. And when I was younger, the old brothers in there, like, you know, every now and then they would let you time, chime in about what your feelings on sports were. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, the old brothers were controlling <laughs> the commentary. And, young boy, what do you have to say about it? And you better be ready because you might not get asked to talk <laughs> much. And you knew your place. You knew your place, mm-hmm. and it was almost like the way the hierarchy should be built, the patriarch should be built, 
mm-hmm. in communities, you know, because you're not ready to talk all the time when you're 12, 13, 14 years old. You need to listen more. Mm-hmm. And so in the barbershop, what you found were doctors, factory workers, preachers, mm-hmm. uh, guys who were retired. I mean, and you just had this melting pot of knowledge and wisdom. And as a young person, you knew your place in that place. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we have places like that anymore in the neighborhood that mm-hmm. young people can look and see here's where you need to be right now young soldier Mm. Uh, learn before you get out here and start Mm. trying then as I got about 18 or 19 and I was a a pretty decent high school football player little ink in the paper Mm -hmm. now jumbo what's your what's Mm. your comment on the game you know you get to talk a little more okay and and, you know and and it's this transfer of speak now Mm. You know, you're getting older, speak now. So, you know, you just watch all these changes that go through um, the, those those years. And, and as a 58-year-old man now, I've shaved my head and I'm bald, but I still go to the barbershop. <laughs> okay. I don't even get my hair cut. Okay. But still go to the barbershop because that's where uh, the most real, mm-hmm. most authentic, most uh, galvanized part of, of, especially as a black man, you can go get some, you can get recharged at the barbershop. Mm-hmm. And, 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 it, and it has that type of, that kind of that holiness almost to it. Oh, holiness yeah. in the barbershop. Hey, bro, because Jesus is in the barbershop. Ah, that's no, cool. At the root of all the conversations, Jesus, I mean, that's the foundation. Everybody okay. who is in there okay. is rooted in some in the faith of that 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 unseen. Hmm. And so all the knowledge, all the wisdom, everything transferred comes from that spirit. So, you know, okay. you're, you're never just getting Jack Benny conversation, so to speak. You're getting you're getting information that's that's uh well, what do you think about education? Mm. What do you think about the church today? Mm-hmm. And, and it's all something that you learn and you, you can learn from, and uh, something that if you have some input, might help s- uh, solutions. So wow. that's that's the black barbershop. Wow! From Harold Bell's perspective, there you go. Yeah, and that's really the essence of what we're all about. We're talking about rootedness and place. You are listening to Radio Next ah, TV at the Cool Groove here, site. Man. This Thank is you. the Warp and Woof Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> RadioNext.tv on the Cool Groove site. Warping Wolf Radio here at RadioNext.tv. Every Wednesday morning, Dr. Mark Echo, Harold H.B. Bell, intersecting wisdom and knowledge uh, right in your ear. That's right. Every Monday and Wednesday, uh, you can get some information. Project 46218, 10 to 12, and we're mm-hmm. doing the same thing. Warping and Wolfing mm-hmm. on that show. Wednesday morning, uh, Dr. Mark, Comenius Institute, and we are just honored. We have the fabulous Wendy Cooper in the studio. <laughs> and at 11 o'clock, we're going to find out what's taking place at Spirit in Place. And uh, this show has been, Mark, I, this is lovely, brother. Yeah. You know, you have me. D- I know, you're all j- throwing the culture out here, man. I'm excited I'm really, now, shoot, boy. I'm going to have a whole bunch of old <laughs> sisters and brothers going to the barbershop just to see if I'm telling the truth. Oh, you know? that barbershop. That, so that was tell, classic, Let me man. tell my brothers out there in the barbershop, if you see a lot of, you know, elderly white folks coming in just sitting around and, <laughs> they're happy because I've given and laid the land of there what happens go. in our barbershops <laughs> in the community. No, but this is great, and it is mm-hmm. it is about place. It is about the culture and the, and the soil that you toil That's in, right. uh, taking care of it. And uh, we want to know how we're going to get this Christian community engaged uh, with the with the order of place, Mark. And you know, our culture is except we're just obsessed with speed, efficiency. Everything in a hurry. Pictures, mm-hmm. no one. You know, remember we had to go get pictures developed. Yeah, you right. Know, pictures now. <laughs> how fast can you put it up on Facebook? So, how does a Christian uh, view of place change how we should and view our lives? Yeah. Our so, lives? just two weeks ago, I was teaching a PhD class out in Pennsylvania, and I'm having them read my book. I just need time to think. And in a lot of doctoral classes, profs want you to meet, read hundreds or thousands of pages. Not me, man. I I really believe in short uh, groups of pages so that people can slow down, reflect, pause, all of that kind of stuff. In fact, the key word, and you'll see this all the way through the through the Psalms, is uh, we want you to pause and reflect. And the word is salah, and so you'll see that all the way through the Psalms, salah, and that's what that means: slow down, reflect, pause, stop, think, consider. Reflect. This, these are huge things, issues for us. So in the Christian community, we need to lo- stop letting the culture drive us, and we need to allow the church 
to stop and reflect and do those things we know scripture kind of help build the culture and you know we were, it's right. interesting we had so many great conversations when we're in the break yeah um and we were talking about the process of understanding things and the lack of uh, the simplicity of right. how we teach and, right. and vocabulary is so key in everything we do any any environment you walk into has a new set of language and a new set of Here's what That's we're right. trying to accomplish. Cultural literacy. Yeah, and, and we are we are so like you said, quick to want uh, the, the results of mm-hmm. that we forget. Here's how you get it. Right. And so you know, if we start explaining and, and showing when people walk into, uh, for instance, a new workplace, mm-hmm. uh, we need to go all the way back to here's a job. That's right. <laughs> here's here's what your job does. Instead of walking in and saying start getting up to speed for it and you don't even have a clue of what it is because the fact is if you're unemployed you've probably been unemployed and and a lot of these things that we're trying to convey are new that's right you so, don't know so you don't know mm-hmm. and if you don't know then you're ignorant so you know we have to provide information at all times mm-hmm. and and that's what i'm love about the show writers we're able to take the time to to give explanations about what we're talking about and place is so huge um how should uh, christians um take a better view of place and how they can help improve the community that they, that they live in. Mark. Sure. Now, you and I talk about this all the time. It's one of your taglines, all community all the time. So I got to tell you about my mom. Of course, hey, mom, how you doing? She's listening out in Mama Denver. Mama Virginia, what's <laughs> <That's> up? <right. laughs> She's out in Denver listening right now. And my mom and her little subdivision, she is making a huge difference there because she's getting folks to talk with each other. She goes out and, and sees people on the sidewalk. She invites them in. She has teas with her neighbors, all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, she's doing all those kinds of things. There was a, a lady who uh, needed some help uh, just recently who had fallen. My mom's a nurse, you know, for 60-plus years. So she goes out and helps. You know, that's the kind of thing that ought to be happening in neighborhoods. Even this week, uh, you know, we just got done with Halloween. Monday night, Robin and I are at the end of our driveway we're just handing out candy to kids we're having a great time you know mm-hmm. we dressed up and everything you know it was a good time so when we're talking about <laughs> don't improving get me started on you, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this to me <laughs> when we, we improve community relationships you got to be there you got to be in your place that's the crucial issue that's what we're talking about now now before we get to your favorite portion of this show yeah. which is you know your movie buff and everyone mm-hmm. knows it and before we talk about it uh you're mentioning place and i uh that seed that was planted project 46218 is spawning uh all senior citizens connect radio show where we're going to have the seniors so i would wow. love for your mom uh, oh. to be a contributor to that show hey, Mom. beginning this Monday, 12 to 2. We're going to invite the seniors in every Monday and find nice. out what's going on in their life, how we can better support the things that they're doing. So that's place Excellent. right there. Um, and, and, you know, your mom, she doesn't uh, mind us mention 80, 83, 82, 82 this year, yeah. uh, on Facebook, using social media, yep. listening to Internet radio in Colorado. So imagine if we can get a place where the seniors can come every Monday and it's their world. It's all about them. Uh, So before we end this segment and introduce Wendy Cooper to our audience, let's talk about some movies that can really uh, have people understand how important place is based on the the principles of Proverbs and the way that we do this show. Sure. So one of the first things i got to talk to you about is this famous scene uh, of Dick Halloran, uh, who's uh, played by Scatsman. Do you remember him? Uh, famous uh, uh, actor, and uh, he was uh, actually doing this scene where he's explaining The Shining in the movie The Shining. <laughs> so he's explaining The Shining to this little man, and it's really quite something. Uh, if you get a chance to do this, just uh, do a YouTube search on The Shining scene with Halloran explaining what The Shine is. And uh, it's just a wonderful little piece, but quite horrific in the same sense because they're dealing with this horror show in Overlook Hotel, which is the whole point behind uh, the idea of uh, The Shining. So I I would love to launch into a long diatribe here about thin places, about how the supernatural and natural worlds come so close to each other in this present life in which we live that we literally see things that we don't see in other places. Uh, One of the great groups that does this are the Irish, uh, who have done these, uh, actually there are websites dedicated to thin places where the supernatural natural worlds come so close that there's literally this transfer so we we shouldn't be surprised by these things but here are some other films Uh, places in the heart Uh, who can forget sally fields danny glover john malkovich Uh, poor family woman trying to stay on the land i mean all that is going on 
the river, a poor landowner in Tennessee, river floods the fields, big company comes in, wants his land, Mel Gibson, Sissy Spacek, fried green tomatoes, an old woman tells stories about people and places, mm-hmm. Kathy Bates, Jessica Tandy, or the field, a man gives his life to the land, wants to buy a, a field adjacent to it, a rich American comes in, wants to build a road, Richard Harris, John Hurt, all of these are ideas and movies that deal with the idea that folks want to invest their lives in a place and sometimes, and we mentioned this in earlier segment in uh, Proverbs 22.10, what is the idea? Don't move the boundary stones. That means don't let your greed overtake what somebody else's land is. Keep your hands off their stuff. Let people live their lives on their place. This is huge stuff. You opening up a can of worms I know here, it. brother. I know uh, it. <laughs> we, we got some work to do from That's what right. it sounds like. And we when do. we come back off the break, we're going to introduce you to Wendy Cooper, who is always doing some great things here in the city of Indianapolis. You're listening to Warp and Wolf Radio on the Cool Groove site at RadioNext.tv. Hey, you're listening to RadioNext.tv at the Cool Groove site, Warp and Wolf Radio every Wednesday, 10 to noon. And we have a great time up in here today. We are talking about the importance of place, and we are thrilled to have Wendy Cooper with us today, uh, somebody who is going to talk to us about spirit and place. Wendy, thanks for being here on the show today. We're grateful for your time. Thank you for having me. It's Absolutely. great to be here. So just to start, uh, we've been talking about place this whole time, a biblical philosophy of place, namely that God has established his world, he's given us this world to take care of, and then do something positive with. So in that light, uh, kind of introduce us to yourself, to your family perhaps, a little bit about your church, your work in Indianapolis, those kinds of things. Well, I am, uh, let's see, I'm originally from Atlanta. I have lived in different parts of the country and moved here about 12 years ago to be with my then husband's family. Okay. Um, and that, and we moved here by design to um, be around some elders before they needed us. Mm. Um, and that has been just a blessing in our family. Um, I have a aunt and an uncle who have uh, imparted their wisdom and their all of the stuff that they have into my children. Nice. Um, And it's been just a wonderful journey to be in Indianapolis with them as they have aged. Um, I have three kids. Uh, I was just sharing that um, three of, all three of them will be on the continent of Africa within two weeks. Mm. Um, So it is, it's an interesting journey to see them fly away from the nest um, and to continue to kind of make their journey and their impact on um, people both near and far. And so I think that uh, as we talk about just being a parent with kids who are flying out of the nest, it's really, it's just a joy to watch them be intentional mm. about how they're in community with people. Um, and I really have enjoyed your comments about place because mm-hmm. I think that it's, it is so timely as um, people are hungry for a place mm-hmm. and, and really, I believe, seeking community, right. which is sometimes based in a place, but more often bla- based, I think, in our hearts. Right. Um, and our hearts are often connected to the places that bring us good memories and um, just recollections of, of things that happened. Mm. So we're just, I think the, the tie-in with this year's Spirit in Place is just, it's phenomenal in terms of uh, their theme this year is home. And home is clearly related to place. Yes. So we're just, I'm excited to be here. Um, I have worshiped in a variety of churches. Um, And really am looking, um, I will continue to say that um, I am a a wonderful believer and it's really about the relationship that people have with Christ, not with the buildings. There you go. Um, And sometimes we get caught in those trappings that um, really create um, some barriers from allowing us to be the best people that we can be, to be... Um, the best Christians that we can be. There you go. Yep. Um, and so I am really continuing to do the work that I do in terms of uh, community development, really based on Christian principles oh. um, and not so much about bricks and sticks. Um, that is an important part of what I do. Mm. 
but I think that what drives me is the really firm belief that people, um, that we should be treating people with kindness mm -hmm. and with respect. And there are things relative to um, housing and economic opportunity that are critical in terms of the health of our neighborhoods. But really, I think those that do the work well um, often drive it from a Christian point of view. Mm -hmm. So um, with that said, I'm just, I'm very happy to be working with um, Pastor Shelby at Ebenezer um, and to be part of Spirit in Place. Nice. It's pretty exciting um, opportunity for, we have created an event called Riverside Speaks and we're excited by the opportunity for uh, Riverside to be able to tell their stories in both of the past, the present, and of the future. Um, and the neighborhood there is very, very rich, um, very diverse, and a lot of the stories often go untold. Mm. So as part of this Spirit in Place event, which is always a tremendous, very thought-provoking 10-day um, celebration in Indianapolis, uh, we have created a pop-up museum that allows, we hope that people will come and do several things. One is have more than one aha moment. Um, two is to really have some fun and three to fellowship and and be in relationship for a short amount of time um, with people that might be new mm. and might be old acquaintances so okay. we're pretty excited about um, being able to participate in that mm. you said something a moment ago about brick, bricks and sticks and mm -hmm. i i thought it might be helpful for everybody to know what your day job is as it were so yeah. that you so folks could get to know you a little bit better that way my day job, I work for Insight Development, and Insight is the not-for-profit development arm of the Indianapolis Housing Agency. So in a short sentence, I am an affordable housing developer. Um, we primarily uh, build multifamily housing in Indianapolis, and we're working on some projects in Fort Wayne and other places around the state as well. Um, we are really focused on providing decent fabulous, I, I would say not just decent, uh, I think fabulous, innovative housing that's affordable. Mm. Um, and I think the last time actually that I was here, it, it was it was a marvelous thing because one of our properties is, um, it's known as Milliken, it's downtown on Mass Ave, okay. and it surrounds the Barton Tower. Um, so in the tower we have public housing residents and Milliken One is what is called an affordable project, which is uh, roughly um, people who are 80% or less of the average median income. Wow, okay. okay. So that's, that's a lot of people. A that's lot of people. working people mm -hmm. um, that have salaries. A lot of people fall into that position. And uh, a woman who lives in Milliken One, <clears throat> Excuse me. Said that she pays eight fifty for a two bedroom apartment down in the, you know, expensive high mm -hmm. rent district. Mm -hmm. um, and that same unit in Milliken Two, which is market rate, um, comparable unit, two bedroom, comparable finishes, size, and and all of that. Those units on the Milliken Two side are running between seventeen and nineteen hundred dollars a month. Okay. So just to give you a picture of what what affordable looks like. Mm -hmm. um, it is less than half yeah. of what um, people of in that neighborhood are, are paying. Mm. And Insight and IHA are very, very committed to making those housing um, opportunities available to Indianapolis residents. Mm. I was at a meeting with um, other public housing agencies around the country and they talked sort of with pride about the fact that they are taking some of their towers down. And we know that in some cities, the towers have not been um, places of safety. Um, and so there's a reason why some, some cities have made that decision. Mm -hmm. 
IHA is very clear that we love our towers. Okay. We think that um, there's an opportunity and we have renovated our towers so they are in mm -hmm. um, beautiful condition. Um, and so there really is a commitment from our leadership that healthy neighborhoods look um, are diverse in their income strata, in their racial makeup, mm -hmm. in a variety of, of opportunities. So we are we are dedicated to keeping um, our real estate available for affordable mm -hmm. um, residents of the city of Indianapolis. It's really fun to hear you talk about the issue of class as a necessity of integration. Uh, we often think of, of integration in different terms, in terms of ethnicity, uh, where we ought to be thinking about how do we engage people who may have more income than somebody else, but have them living in the same area. I mean, this is a, a big deal if you really want to actually talk about people in community. Everybody of all strata should be in community together. And those are the neighborhoods that work best. Yes. If you think about the desirable neighborhoods in the city of Indianapolis, um, part of what makes them fabulous and desirable is that there are people of all walks of life. Uh, and I think that as the downtown um, pocket for residential development has really taken off over the last 10 years, that part of that is there's different housing options. Um, they And there's different transportation options. There's different retail options. Um, that create sort of the unique fabric of, of neighborhoods that work. Mm -hmm. So you can, in uh, Old Northside, um, very close to downtown, there are big, beautiful houses. There are old houses that have been renovated. There are lots of houses there that have carriage houses mm. that have an opportunity for either intergenerational housing to occur so people can age with their family yes or um, it also provides an opportunity for the homeowner to have a secondary source of income if they choose to either do that with a family member mm -hmm. as we should with college students as they're blossoming there and launching you go. right oh yeah there you go mom that's right that's right <laughs> and then uh, or, or you know but not so much I don't think with parents but I, mm -hmm. it does give you the opportunity to create an additional wealth stream or revenue stream for your family. Sure. Um, so you see that happening a lot. So smaller houses sort of in the shadow of big houses um, and smaller, you know, little bungalows that are charming or whatever um, that, that, that are really at a different price point mm -hmm. and allow people of different um, income stratas to to join each other at churches, at the grocery store, at the farmer's market, wherever it might be, and just to have mm. those experiences rather than being foreign to that and right. not really understanding um, what the lingo is. Or, or at the end of the day, I think that at the end of the day, we're all people. That's right. And um, getting along as people and understanding that we're all part of the human family is really uh, is really essential. Mm -hmm. And in not having the airs or the pretense or the prejudgment that says, uh, you live in that neighborhood, so we must assume that you act a certain way, mm -hmm. one way or the other. Or that you have this amount of money or, or, or. Or, or not. Yeah, right. right. Your comments about aging uh, were of interest to me because uh, my mother-in-law lived with us for seven years in our home. And so that concept of making sure that families stay together is not something we really talk about maybe as much as we ought, but it sure, sure seems like here's an opportunity for something like that. It's absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's and, and on the other end of the spectrum, too, as we have children who are adult children who yes. are lingering longer. Yes, they are. <laughs> yep. And and that is, you know, not necessarily their fault. It's the economic situation that we live in. Um, but providing them an opportunity to graduate into full adulthood um, without actually sharing the bathroom sink. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, we're getting we're getting down to it now. <laughs> we need to take a break here. We're really go- glad that you're here, though, Wendy. Thanks Thank so you. much for spending time. We'll come right back after a short break. You're listening to Radio Next TV at the Cool Groove site, Warp and Wolf Radio. You are listening to Radio Next TV at the Cool Groove site. This is Warp and Woof Radio coming to you every Wednesday from 10 to noon. And you will hit our podcast later on. Look for it on social media. This week, we are talking about the importance of place and specifically our concern about home and community. And we are thrilled to have Wendy Cooper here with us. And she's going to explain a little bit about this uh, background, this overview of Riverside Speaks Past, Present, and Future. Take it away. Well, we're, we're just delighted. Uh, and this is actually, I'm just going to give a little bit of a shout out to my friend, um, Pastor Sean Shelby, who's the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, for having this vision. Um, and really what he... Uh, envisioned we are putting together. Uh, Riverside Speaks is a pop-up museum in two locations that highlights the accomplishments, stories, and concerns of the residents of Riverside, which Mm. is, anybody who doesn't know, it's located in the northwest area of uh, Indianapolis um, and historically has just been a pocket of accomplishment primarily for African Americans, but um, has a rich history with Native Americans, um, Caucasians, Germans, um, so a real diverse um, background. So the event itself is actually at Ebenezer Baptist Church, and there um, people will have an opportunity to embrace and hear some of the stories from some of the elders in the neighborhood um, and some of those people have oh it's just it, it, it's fabulous I'm, I'm so excited the um, mm. there are people who will be talking about their experience at Attics High School mm. um, and Attics the film that was recently made will be available for viewing it will just be so people can see it. I doubt that anybody will spend an hour and a half looking at it on Saturday, but if they want to, it's available um, for viewing. Um, HB and we, I were there that night it was, for the wasn't documentary it tremendous, opening. Wasn't it tremendous? It was absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, some of the, the storytellers from there will be available to tell their stories. Um, Tom Ridley is going to be speaking. Wow. Um, and he is a very well loved um, storyteller, knows all of the jazz musicians from Indiana Avenue. Nice. Um, there are speakers from um, Nancy is speaking from, about the history of Ransom Place. I believe that one of the Flanner House home builders will be there. Great. Just a variety of people who um, have have contributed to our city's greatness Mm. um, and their stories are marvelous Mm. wonderful and really those who come and listen I think that their lives will be seriously enriched nice Um, and so we also have in addition to um, the past and present which is really located at the church there will also be sort of a mini worship happening at the church. All right. Um, The church is celebrating their 56th anniversary. So this event is part of that celebration. Um, So in addition to the stories, there will be a performance, performances ongoing from Kenyette um, Dance Company. They're Mm -hmm. marvelous if you have not seen them. Um, There will be a mini worship service so that folks just who have never encountered a black church experience can come and have a mini worship experience. And again, the event is designed for people to come and linger as they want to. So if they want to spend all day with us, we're happy to have them. Um, If they want to spend an hour with with us and their family, uh, I think that their lives will be enriched as well. Mm So the other part of the event is kind of the insight development part. Um, And Pastor Shelby approached me 
a while ago okay um, about this idea and he really because of spirit in places theme of home he approached me as a home developer oh okay we, insight is actually acquiring um, homes to renovate these are boarded and blighted these are the big uglies in the neighborhood that are creating mm -hmm. the headache and the eyesore for neighbors um, so we are acquiring properties and renovating them and making them available for sale mm. um, for affordable buyers in Indianapolis. Mm. So Pastor Shelby approached me and thought it, this would be a great opportunity for us to talk about what we're doing mm. in the neighborhood. Um, mm. And I, I will go back to the bricks and sticks. We're an affordable housing developer. Um, housing is what we do. We make the bricks and sticks happen so that they are beautiful for families. The home is where the heart is, where people find that sense of community. So we are happy that we are able to showcase some of our houses mm -hmm. as part of um, the Riverside Speaks and kind of what will happen with us is we will be talking, we will be having a variety of programming about what the neighborhood looks like now and where the neighborhood is moving to the future. Mm. So as we are getting ready to sell homes, most, not all, we anticipate a lot of the buyers will be um, millennials. Okay. Um, or Generation Xers, sort of a little bit younger than I am. Mm. Um, and the homes will be available for a variety of people. So if people are looking to downsize or looking to move closer to downtown, Riverside is a tremendous neighborhood to mm. do that. Um, but we fully expect that most homeowners, and again, not all, but most homeowners, new homeowners, are younger people. So the programming will be targeted um, really to them about how they can, how they see themselves um, involved with education, with politics, with being mm -hmm. a good neighbor and a concerned citizen, mm. um, how they, things about nutrition and wellness and how, how to make their house that we are constructing into a home and how they can be in community with their neighbors, mm. with their churches, with the businesses, and the multitude of um, sort of institutional partners that surround this neighborhood. So all of the colleges and the museums, um, and how how we connect the dots. Mm. So we're we're very excited about the programming that will be happening at both places. Mm -hmm. um, the the church being sort of pet past and present, and the celebration of uh, the accomplishments of people there, and then the house um, as how do people keep those stories of accomplishments and that legacy building moving forward. Mm. You know, it sounds, you've been talking about houses and, and uh, millennials moving in possibly and so on into this neighborhood. And the past and the future, obviously, uh, it's to me. It sounds like you're an urban planner, quite frankly. I mean, you're interacting and intersecting with all of these various uh, niches of a community, of a city. You know, you're talking about uh, shopping, you're talking about museums, you're talking about colleges and politics and neighborhood. It's all together, as far as you're concerned. It is all together, and and for us, um, it it is integrated, and this is. Uh, the real estate in this neighborhood, um, there's a tremendous challenge with abandoned homes. Um, it has the highest concentration of Renew Indies properties, and those are properties that have been through the tax sale and have basically okay. considered abandoned. Okay. So we are strategically um, looking at acquiring as many Renew Indie properties as we can. But there are also other properties that we have acquired that have been boarded and blighted that are just, um, in Riverside, you can drive down a block that looks beautiful. You can tell there's pride in home ownership or community care. 
Um, and then there's one or two houses that are creating havoc for the people who live there. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that we're really seeking out first um, to try to stabilize the neighborhood so that the neighborhood, the people who've been there um, are not challenged, uh, challenged with the mess of, right. of blighted property. Because um, that pulls everybody's property down. This is we're talking about baseline economics here. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. And and so we are. You know, we are moving. Um, we have acquired nine properties in Riverside. Um, we expect to renovate eight of them this year, eight or nine this year, with an eye towards doing fifty over the next three to five years. Wow, fifty in three to five. And that's that is that's a lofty goal. Yeah, and that's it's, okay. It requires a lot of um, a lot of people on the team, mm -hmm. um, a lot of innovation, and a lot of input from the neighbors mm -hmm. um, to continue to make sure that we are developing in a way that is responsible and allows people to stay in their neighborhood and not be displaced. And respectful even to the neighborhood. So responsible and respectful. Very, very true. Yeah. And it's, um, we really feel like when development occurs that way, that is how neighborhoods remain healthy. And our, our goal is to strengthen and to stabilize a neighborhood that has been challenged by some of the economic fallout. Mm. So. Wow. Yeah, lofty goals, but good goals. <laughs> good is, goals. And yes. it, you know, it sure sounds vaguely familiar, something like uh, love your neighbor as yourself, you know? Yes, very, very <laughs> true. Very true. And I think at the end of the day, I think people really are seeking being in community. Mm -hmm. And so the, the simple things of having a block party, oh. the, you know, the, um, we just came from Halloween. So yes. um, I lived on a street that, um, two blocks, we closed the street off and the adults would be out with their bonfires and their hot cider, um, which we'll be serving on Saturday in the tent. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> and, um, but really just, allowing the kids to be able to walk up and down the street to be able to see not only their children but their neighbors children mm -hmm. go from house to house know that they're safe mm -hmm. um, and just really having uh, a bunch of adults watch the pack of kids in a safe environment mm -hmm. and i think those are kind of you know sort of the good old days but yeah. Um, people, I think, in in our current climate have to be intentional about creating communities. And we talk about this word intentional all the time in the show. Uh, you just can't think, you just can't expect people to show up. Mm -mm. They're not going to just show up for whatever it is, you know, fill in the blank to that. So the intentionality of every action, when we talk about community, we talk about how ac accountability is literally built into community. So if you want accountability, then you have community. And if you don't, ha you can't have one without the other. So instead of having a whole list of laws and rules and regulations, community will take care of itself, thank you very much. It will, yeah. it will. And I think that the key is getting people to understand that they can participate and they should participate, but yes. they can. Yes. Um, and that it's it does not require an advanced degree to be kind to your neighbor. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, when you see somebody who needs something, yeah. offer to help yeah. uh, and take your earbobs out for a minute and say <laughs> hello and be yeah. prepared to maybe ask some questions and listen for a couple of minutes. Sure. Um, because I think people are always interested in sharing their story if you ask. Yes. One of the things that uh, my students find out all the time from me, I, I teach high school students now mm. all the way through PhD. So I'm teaching all different kinds of people and when I'm always hitting them with all, it doesn't matter what level I'm teaching, story is the key. Because once you hear somebody else's story and you share your story with them, there's this interconnectivity. People's ears perk up, their eyes perk up when the preacher starts telling a story. That's very true. Yeah, that's, that's what it should be all about. That's very true. So we, we have created with Riverside Speaks an opportunity for stories to be told. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope and encourage people to come by and hear the stories mm -hmm. and to tell their own stories. It is a... 
a flexible enough format that we hope that people will join in. Um, I know the conversations in the tent are really designed to facilitate some dialogue and conversation. Um, and so we are hoping that it is not that you just come and sit on the sidelines, uh, but that you that you participate and interact with the people who are there talking about either their life work, their passion, or their accomplishments and, and stories of, of the neighborhood. Well, I am uh, bringing something as simple as my cell phone and tripod, <laughs> and I'm going to set up down there for a couple of hours on Saturday morning, and I'm just gonna ask people to tell stories. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. And, uh, and we just hope to put this up on YouTube, you know, that kind of thing, yes. just for the sake of whoever would like to see it. Uh, you can obviously connect with that and run with it in whatever direction you want to go, so that would be really good. Uh, tell us about the general overview of, you know, timing, uh, the day again, the place, the uh, actual address, you know, things like that for folks who are listening. The event is this Saturday, November 5th. It starts at 9 o'clock in the morning for those early risers <clears throat> and goes until 4 p.m. It is a come as you can and as you want to. Um, guests are encouraged to start at Ebenezer Baptist Church, which is at 1901 North Harding Street. There will be a shuttle, a free mm -hmm. shuttle that is available um, to take guests to the house, which is at 25th and Harding Street. And we are encouraging people to get on the bus I believe that we will have some stories told on the bus oh, about okay. transportation, um, but I think the more important mm -hmm. piece is that at 25th and Harding, it's a little bit congested. It is a residential neighborhood there, and so we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity for parking. So oh, it's okay. just easier sure. um, to start at the church, spend some time there. You're welcome to come by 2502 North Harding as well. Um, and it is a free event. It is a family-friendly event. So you can bring uh, your uh, young people and old people. The house, just so that everybody knows that 25th and Harding is not handicapped accessible. Okay. Okay, so an important note. Um, some houses in the project will be accessible, we anticipate, but this one is not. Okay. Um, and so um, we are looking for um, people to come and, and bring their friends. And if you want more information, um, you can find us at Riverside Speaks, which is the name of the event, um, at spiritandplace.org. That's spiritandplace.org. <clears throat> or at Ebenezer Church Indy dot org. And the details of the event are there on both of those websites okay. as well. Now, did I hear something earlier about cider? We do. We're, oh, we're serving, okay, so it's November 5th. Yes. And we anticipated that it would be chilly. Yes. Uh, November 5th. We are very, very fortunate to be still cruising along with summertime like <laughs> uh, right. weather. Um, but very, very simple um, cider and probably coffee will be served at uh, the tent. We are working on. Um, having some food trucks available oh, okay. um, because we know if people stay for the course of the day which we would love to have them do that um, that having sustenance is a good idea that would be a good idea yes. so we are we're working on that um, and hoping that we have a couple show up food trucks um, I know several people that are in that business they stay where there's a crowd and where the crowd is supporting them. There you go. And so if we have a crowd of people who are supporting our street vendors, they will stay and be happy. All right. Um, and hopefully uh, there'll be a, a, a little bit of variety of food available. But Sounds like we should bring some green <clears throat> with us then. Yeah, uh, oh, <laughs> yes, that's a good idea for the vendors. Yes, I yes. keep saying this is a free event, but yes. For the vendors. For yeah. the vendors, that's a good idea. Um, and... Um, that's that's how we'll do that. Okay, very good. Well, we'll look forward to all of that. I, I do understand, too, that uh, 
at, in my reading on, online and uh, on the website at IUPUI and so on that this uh, Riverside Speaks event has actually won what is being called an awesomeness <laughs> award. You know, f forgive me, I, I, f I feel like I'm in my wife's second grade classroom. You know, this is an <laughs> awesomeness award, but this is really cool. I mean, you know, you got this whole event and you've been declared awesome. We have been declared wow. awesome and we were really excited. Uh, Spirit of Place um, actually uh, made that determination, which gives us a little extra on yeah. the on the uh, print material. But it also create it really does recognize even at the early planning stages that this is a an awesome event. Um, <laughs> that it is that it is perfectly placed um, given the the theme of home the connection to community and church as a integral part of community and where we see ourselves as in a home. Right. Um, and so I think that we, we actually, we were excited that we were able to kind of hit all of those marks, mm -hmm. but I think the real awesomeness of the event is with the speakers that will be uh, sharing um, their experiences, and I think that it creates an awesome event for people to come and participate. And it is really the dimensions of all of that that I think um, earned that recognition. So That's we're great. we're excited. I think that it will be more awesome with people and their participation. Um, and I think the. The whole notion of a living history yes. um, museum where you can actually interact with people who've been part of history um, creates that that platform for awesomeness. Yeah. This, uh, you know, the living history thing goes, makes me think of story. And then, of course, when I think about story, I think about, you know, how people connect with each other best and how do we tell each other these stories that are really important. Tell us a little bit uh, with, we've got a few minutes left here, about how this connects to IUPUI. Why is this event connected to a university setting? We are very close to IUPUI and I think as um, all of the things around 16 Tech as that new development comes online, Riverside is the adjacent neighborhood Okay. in its very simplest form. Um, and I think that we, um, Spirit in Place, came out of IUPUI really with a tilt towards humanities, that our city needs to um, embrace conversations, meaningful conversations around how we are part of a human family. Mm. And so, the organization is actually housed at the university, um, which is an interesting place. Uh, it's marvelous because it, it really does focus on the human family, um, and it is backed by a institution with all of the resources that come with academia. Yes. Um, and I think what Spirit in Place has done extraordinarily well is created a, an event that is driven by various communities in Indianapolis. So each event um, at Spirit in Place is its own, um, it's its own event. So when Pastor Shelby came up with this idea for Riverside Speaks, he put together the team that is part of, that's driving the nuts and bolts and making sure that the event runs smoothly and all of the programming and all of that for this particular event. But Spirit in Place is the umbrella that brings a series of events like this together to have um, meaningful discussions, thought for thought-provoking moments within the context of the entire Indianapolis community. We speak an awful lot about the, or we use the word all the time, the word diversity. Um, it, do you think that it's important for us to perhaps begin to, to shift the conversation toward unity? Hmm. That's, that's, uh, that's very interesting. I think that that, that is a worthwhile conversation. 
um, with all of the, um, I would say, horror and shame um, that our country is experiencing right now with challenges relative to diversity. At the end of the day, um, we are all part of the human family. And I think your, your notion of, and finding that common ground as a human um, is really, is gonna be critical in terms of moving us forward. I think that, that part of finding that common ground um, is getting a better understanding of diversity um, but that as as a common piece, and I think in this instance for um, for this event this weekend and over the next 10 days with Spirit in Place, I think the common piece is that people want to be in community with other people. Yeah. And you can't have community without unity, since unity is the essential part of community. Very true. Yeah. Very true. And finding, finding that common peace, you know, we all, we all love our families. We all want the best. And finding that that crosses cultural barriers. Um, but people have to, I think there has to be work Yes. And, and, and exercise and sort of being intentional about... Intentional. There we go. <laughs> about creating opportunities for a better understanding to get to that commonality right. and unity. Right. But we're, we're, we're moving that way. That's good. You know, the common ground that you well emphasize uh, literally comes out of the common grace that God has mm. given to all people. Absolutely. And uh, how we appropriate that and how we assimilate it, that w within our own lives, much less within the lives and scopes of others, is huge. Uh, this event uh, certainly is something that will create not only an interest in learning about other people, but perhaps maybe plant seeds. Do you see this as a seed planting opportunity? I do see it as a seed planting opportunity. And I think that I think the seeds are always marvelous because you never really know where they're coming from, what they are, or how they'll blossom. But I think that when, when we take a minute to get a better understanding of somebody else's experience, that those aha moments manifest themselves in ways that we have no idea. Uh, and so I think that the best that we can do is provide an opportunity for um, soil that's rich and for those seeds to be planted. Um, and I'm hoping really that people come, and I think, I think that what Spirit in Place traditionally has, has uh, provided to the city is um, an opportunity for people to question, um, to be open, and to have moments to pause and to think maybe there's a different view. Yes. So I think that's the power of um, the, the entire festival. I think that we, as you know, for Riverside Speaks, we are pleased to be able to present some of those aha moments. That's great. That's great. I mean, this is what uh, this should be all about, the idea of listening. I was teaching this last weekend, and somebody asked me a question at the end of my uh, lecture about how do we uh, engage uh, with other people and how do we have this kind of community and communication. And I smiled, and I said, we need to shut up and listen. You know, out of an hour, let's say, if you have an hour conversation with somebody, 55 minutes of it should be listening. Right and maybe five minutes asking questions. Right, you know. and I, I think that there really is a fine art. My kids would say, I used to say, you have two ears and one mouth. There you go. By design, God created us that way. There it is. So maybe we need to use the power of our ears. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, the ears uh, connecting to the heart, that, it, that really listening to people where they are coming from 
yes. um, is, is critical. And I, I can't think of a better way to end that today. Uh, Wendy, thank you ever so much You're for welcome. your good words and for this intersection. Just one more time, this is the Riverside Speaks event. Come to see a pop-up museum at 1901 North Harding Street in Indianapolis at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Uh, Reverend Sean Shelby is there. And if you want to go online and check it out, it's www.ebenezerchurchindy.org. We're looking forward to seeing you. You might even see me, and you might I might even ask you to tell me a story. So watch out for me and my tripod and my phone uh, camera going on down there in the morning. Uh, this coming Saturday morning, we're looking forward to it. It's been a great time here again this week. We've been talking about the importance of place. You are listening to RadioNext.tv at the Cool Groove site. And next week, we are going to be talking with a 10-point coalition. Looking forward to that opportunity, and I will be on their show. And so until next week, this is Warp and Woof Radio.